Okay. All right. So we will get into that SISQ account. That's how I uh, pronounce it. It's a SISQ okay. account. The SISQ account, the SISQ buy. And then there's that SISQ T. It's a di several different pronunciations. But okay. we want to uh, explain it and tap into it, and it will it, it will uh, give you plenty of information why you're in debt and what this whole system is based on when it comes to economics in the United States. But yeah. first, let me announce my airtime on mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm on at 6 p.m. Ron Mark show, uh, 6 to 8 as I am tonight. On Tuesdays, we do a live class, study class. It's called the Right to Travel. It's a sovereign class where we deal with redemption, all types of economic uh, problem situations that we're encountered with each day. So uh, that's very important because uh, each class is lively and everyone has to participate. And I've been getting, uh, some of your people have been watching, and I've been getting okay, very great. favorable, yep, I've been getting very favorable uh, uh, responses from the class. They don't know how I can deal with people the way I do, but, you, you know, once you learn who Ron March is, you know, the crazy man, wild man from Borneo, to say that was <laughs> okay. Up. But we have a lot of fun at the class. And then we have your class, of course, on Wednesday. And then okay. Saturday, we have a live from Detroit show, which is Economics and Politics. Uh, that show, we are, are beginning to broaden out a little bit because most people in Detroit know me or know of me. And mm -hmm. so it's more of the local politics, which, by the way, is spreading all over the United States. So right. if you could get into anyone that lives in the Detroit area and understand what they're doing to us here, you can prepare yourself because it's coming to your community. Now, uh, last but not least, uh, the the uh, except for value package that I offered last week with a thirty five dollar uh, let's call it discount, if you will. Okay. Uh, I'm getting some favorable responses to that, and uh, the people that have received it, um, if you send it in. Uh, and let me know that you're that you're in and you paid. I will get it out to you within the hour. Once I see it, that you have uh, contacted PayPal or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I checked mm -hmm. my email box, but I haven't given my email, my PO box. I haven't given that number out because I really don't have that number with me. And every time I get over here, I say yes, I do. I got it right here. Let me give you. Uh, some of the people say they don't like to deal with the internet. What have you? So let me give you okay. my P.O. box. Now, P.O. box 28584-28584, Detroit, Michigan, 48228-0632. One more time, P.O. box 28584-28584, Detroit, Michigan, 48228 Dash zero six three two. Okay. All right. Now, All right. last night I, I did something in class. Now, that, what, well, okay, before so you go there, Ron, do do you just give it to you send it to them through the mail, or do you send it to them if they wanted it through email? Email is, is, is preferred, but I can I can print it out and mail it for those that if they uh, want to okay, want. Them. Okay. Yes, gotcha. Uh, and and to pay, you go straight to my uh, website, Ron March Show, and right on the home page, there's a donation box, and you can donate the the funds, and at the same time, you can put a memo in there uh, for a package or for a uh, a four v any way you want to do it. Uh, I got one today. He sent two emails. One. Uh, email, uh, PayPal notified me that he had paid, and then I got an email from him telling me what he had done, and he had a few questions that I dealt with. Also getting, getting phone calls uh, uh, in the evenings from your, your viewers, uh, uh, listeners, 
And I hope they don't think I'm rude, but I've, I've been doing this long enough to know that I, I don't know how to say it. I like to cut right to the chase. Don't come up here trying to tell me about Granny did this to Uncle Fred, and Fred said he's going to do this. And as a result, they did this, and now I'm suffering. I don't care about all that. I just tell you, wait, stop, stop. Let's get right to the issue. What is your problem? Why are you calling me? Now, I don't think, I hope you don't think that I'm rude, but I, I'm not going to tolerate all that gobbledygook that I don't need to hear about on my time. <laughs> right, okay. All right. But I'm going to answer every call. I answer every call. And I haven't had any complaints from anyone, but I just wanted uh, everyone to know that uh, if you got a, if you got a problem or a question for me, let's get right to it, folks. You ain't got to give me the whole history. If I ask for history, you give it to me. And that's something to to know when you go see these professional persons, such as an attorney or judge. They don't want to hear all that gobbledygook, all that run around stuff. Sometimes it makes them angry. Cut right to the chase and then shut up and listen, with, and listen for your answer. And then go from there. If you didn't get it, ask the question again. That type of thing. Okay. okay. There's now, no need. Of... Also, somebody also wants to know what is your PayPal account? How do they connect with you on PayPal? Right. Just go to my home page. It accepts PayPal right on the home page. Okay. So they go to the right. Yeah, I don't have show. to worry about it. When it taps donation, it I ask you, do you want to go credit card, a Visa, Master? And then it says PayPal, just tap PayPal. Or you can go with just, if you don't have a uh, master, I mean, excuse me, if you don't have a PayPal account and don't want to use PayPal, PayPal will let you use it. Uh, they'll charge me a fee. But if you want to go through PayPal and don't have an account, that's good. No, no big deal on my end. But if you choose not to use PayPal at all, which is okay, you can use your credit card direct right there on, the, on my home page. Okay. So you don't have to worry about do I have a, a PayPal or not have a PayPal. Okay. All right. No okay. right, good enough. Uh, uh, last night I started out with some information that I finally found my nephew and I, uh, and it's real simple, real quick, uh, and I need to give it to you so you can look it up. A uh, Popeye, Popeye the Sailor Man. I know you want to know what they got to do with anything. But I, okay. let me tell you something. Popeye the Sailor Man had an enemy called Bruno. Right. They had a woman called Olive Oil. Uh-huh. In the 17, 16, 17, 18, and even today in the 21st century, there has been a battle between the Europeans and the hue colored persons over their women. Popeye the Sailor Man was invented, created, or put into a cartoon to show that the European Popeye was kicking Bruno's butt with his spinach to get out of all who was cute of color. <laughs> Wait a minute. Olive Oil was, had color to He was that skinny, skinny leg and all, that skinny leg female that they were fighting uh, over all the time. Right. Okay. She was the uh, black female. Mm. Popeye was definitely a European. There was no question about him. No, right. no mustache, sailor cap, sleeve rolled back, a uh, redneck hillbilly. Yeah, that's what he looked. Bruno like. was had a mustache, a beard, and dreadlocks, and wore fez or a little cap on the top of his head. Wow, there's many times. With his power, like yeah, with his power, he would always kick, um, 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 uh, uh, what's the name, butt, until he got that can of spinach. So now you can take that concept and put it in our history. We won our wars and r- ruled the earth until the European united and turned us on ourselves, which was the spinach and defeated ourselves. George Washington, he chopped down the cherry tree. The Civil War, as it really was fought, was to destroy the Moorish Empire, to destroy Bruno. Now, it's important that I'm bringing this to you because I finally found, when this brother told me this, uh, a bit, about six years ago, I laughed 
and everything he said I knew was true. And he kept telling me there is a statue of Popeye in the St. Louis area. Okay. And, and every time I went to St. Louis, I would ask about Popeye. And everybody said, oh, they don't know nobody about Popeye. Get out of here. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Chester, Chester, Illinois, is 61 miles from St. Louis, Missouri. And St. you know, there's an East St. Louis, Missouri, and then there's a St. Louis, no, no, St. Louis, Missouri, and an East St. Louis, Illinois. You, you, you okay. know that, right there? Well, yeah, Chester, East St. Louis. Yep, that, East St. Louis is in Illinois, and St. Wow. Louis is in Missouri. Okay. And the Mississippi runs right down through that area. Hmm. Now, there's a city 61 miles from East St. Louis called Chester, Illinois. And Chester, Illinois is known as Home of Popeye, where a wow. six foot. <laughs> wow. You always wow. come. You make us scratch our heads every week, <laughs> Professor. That's why I call you Professor. <laughs> Boy, I've been looking for this, I'm telling you, for five years. And my nephew, he's going down to St. Louis this weekend, and I ran it on him. He said, oh, you lying. I said, I'm telling you, man, it's down there. He went online on Wikipedia, and it came up. So it's a 900-pound, 410 uh, kg bronze statue of Popeye the Sailor Man. It stands in the... Isa C. Cigar, Cigar, S-E-G-A-R, Memorial Park, <laughs> which honors Popeye's creator, Elzi, E-L-Z-I-A, Cigar, S-E-G-A-R. The park is located next to the Chester Bridge. Several of Cigar's characters were created from the experience with the people of Chester. All them old. Cartoon people, they live in Chester. Uh, one more couple of sentences. Chester, uh, big event. It, it's, now listen to this, uh, Abed. Chester's big event is its annual Popeye picnic and parade held every week, I mean, held the weekend after Labor Day. Popeye fans wow. travel from all over the United States and the world to partake in the Week in activity. Most of the ah. events entertainment are free and family friendly. Hmm. I'll keep it right there. <laughs> oh, I love geez. it. I and love it. So, and, and someone in the chat room, uh, Ron, said that they called olive oil because of her olive complexion. Yes, yes, yes. And she was of olive complexion. And had that little short dress on, little skirt, and had them old knees and old skinny legs. Yeah. And they were fighting over her every every cartoon. They were fighting over Oliver. Yeah. Olive oil. yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we can get off of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good information. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy that. Yeah. All right. Now, here we go. Now. I've made it clear that the uh, United States of America is a religious ecclesiastic 501c3 corporation. And the grantor, the one that filed for it, was a Euro European uh, art archbishop named Derek McLeod. M C L E O D McLeod McLeod I wrote, you want to pronounce it. He made the trustees. One was the Queen of England, and the other was the Pope of the Vatican. Now, when you get into these types of trust, you have to know how to make them work and the instruments of the trust. So let's just keep in mind that we are in a fictitious government called United States of America. Now, let's go back to the school books. The school books always taught us when they got into world history 
or at least when I was going to school, that they had a period in England called the Black Plague or the Black History of England. Everything went haywire. They just they was just dying and carrying on with all that cholera and disease and all that mess. Well, during that period, which was 1666, and I'm going to start using all of my presentations with a timetable structure coming from 1666, because at that time they introduced a a a a a financial act. I'm going to call it a financial act, ACP, known as SISQ Act. The act being debated, but legally, here's what it says: legally, we are considered to be fictitious. Now, all the way back. Now, remember these dates: 1666. That the European had not established himself in the United States yet. There was no George Washington yet. There was no uh, John Hanson, first black president, yet. There was no Declaration of Independence yet, 1776. We're talking about almost 100 years prior to. They came up with a act, ACT, known as CISQ Act. Was a subordinate it was to sub, 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 how can you pass the word? Subrocate, subrocate, mm -hmm. subrocate the rights of men and women, meaning all men and women were declared dead, D E D, D E A D. And once they did that, they set up and put all the dead bodies, now we're talking fictitiously now, keep in mind. Okay. All the dead bodies were put into a trust called the Sissacue Trust. Okay. And that Sissacue Trust had multi people, some alive, mm. some dead. But since they were in this office, quote unquote, and I'm naming it that to give you a concept of what I'm talking about, into this coffin, what they did. Everybody had to go in there. Now, all your property went into this Sissacue Trust. Now, for you ladies, to make you follow me clear, all ladies, listen carefully. When your child was born, every one of them, they, they came and made you sign all those papers. One of those papers was called a, a live birth record. Right. And once you sign it, they didn't bother you no more. You can sign the rest of the papers next week, next month, or get out of here. We don't care. We'll mail it to you. Right. But once they yeah. got you to mail that one in ink and put that child's name on it, they went to the office, called for a, a, a courier called the Commerce Department, and, the, and they sent a courier to the hospital with a, with a pouch, and they put that document in that pouch, and it was his, his responsibility to get that pouch to, to uh, New York, 55, 55 Water Street, in a building called Tower of Power. Now, all you got to remember this. This is the backbone of your debt. It's the backbone of your debt. And what they did with that document, they put it into a secure account that that baby was dead. And whatever that baby uh, a did during his lifetime, it went to, to the account called Ron March All Caps Sissacue account with a, 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 a trustee, a trust number of my Social Security. Did you get that? Now, yeah, now, if the baby died for real, they didn't put him in that account, right? Yep. Yes, they did. So even the yes, real, they even... They put because he may have been a heir to some estate. Mm, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't care. And everyone that was in this account were, well, they were dead. Now, why were they dead? Because they created a fictitious entity known as Ron March All Caps and put it in by your mama's per per permission into this coffin trust known as 
physical drug. Okay. And the United States or this 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 archbishop in Washington D.C. But no, we, I'm I'm jumping around, but I'm trying to tell you whoever in England, whoever the grantor was that set that up, he owned everything in that trust. And the only ones that could function the trust were the trustees. Now, they never want to talk about the beneficiary. This is where the game starts to be played. So let's forget wow. that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Come on. Well, Maybe we'll, we'll get to the beneficiary next hour. Let's oh stay right here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, there's another word that I just mentioned to you. I wish I could pronounce this, baby. Somebody, I don't know, call in and tell me how to pronounce this thing. Is Ligus, E-N-S-L-E-G-I-S. Now, let me give you the definition of this which is very important. I'm going to read it twice. It's only one sentence. It's Latin word. It says, a creature of law, an artificial being, as contrast with a natural person. I'll say it again. Here I go. Egan's legs is a creature. Notice what they call it. A creature of law. Isn't that strange? An mm. artificial person, an artificial being, as contrasted to or with a natural person. So my Igus Ligus is Ron Mar Ronald March, all caps, which is a creature of law, which is a artificial being, but it is contrasted to Ron March, upper and lower cap, which is a natural person. <laughs> I'm getting good at this. Wow. Uh, now, now was, Ron, this, this was even before they came up with the United States of America. Correct. Before they came up with that corporation. This is yes. already there, 1666. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 It says so applied to straw man. So basically, okay, but straw man came straw in man. later. They, they they didn't want to call you a creature, and they didn't want you to get hip to what they was doing, a creature of law. So you know they never teach you law in school. So they called it a straw man. It's a creature, something set up that don't exist, but it does business for a natural person, like a front runner. Okay. And here it, it, the second sentence says, applied to corporations considered as deriving their existence entirely from law. Hmm. Now you understand why 98% of all Moors study law. They're not all good at it, but they yeah. always talk about law. They have to. And everyone listening better start getting hit or they'll never make it. Okay? And they need to start teaching their babies, uh, the young ones, because they grasp on real good. Don't wait till they get to junior high and high school. They need to teach them in elementary school law. They can start yes. with the basics. Yes, yes. But don't forget now, they just changed the school structure. And they're coming up with the EAI and the PPO and the doo doo D. All of that is because they know we're waking up. And somebody named Beverly D is going to make a statement that we should teach this in school and we want to set up rules and regulations that we can't bring it in this school. Well, you know what? We, we don't even want to take it there anyway. This is why Professor Ron March is on the air now breaking it down, explaining it to you. It's your obligation to teach your children at home. I agree. I agree. I totally agree. I had one of your students last night from Maryland, and when I got through with him, he was, all he was saying was, wow. <laughs> wow. I know. I know. <laughs> It was fun. And you know I like to show out and make your head hurt anyway. And that's the way I teach. 
That's the way I teach. All right, now, let's get back to the... We, 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 ain't, we, we ain't even scratched the surface yet. All right, now, we got Popeye down the way, and we're dealing with... Oh, here it is, up under the sheet. Now, it says, legally, we are considered to be fiction. Everyone is fiction. Everyone is Popeye, the sailor man. Everyone is Casper, the friendly ghost. I don't care who you are, what you do, what you represent. You are nothing until you declare your status. Status is the most important position statement that can be made in the world. Your status. Why do you think preachers get respect? Because they wear that little bull crap on their, on their lapel to indicate they're a preacher. And then they may have a, 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 a flower in their pocket, suit coat pocket. They wear a suit and tie. And when the Europeans see him coming, he know he's a he's friendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a pimp mm -hmm. has respect. He's riding in a Cadillac. He's leaning. Yeah. He's clean. Yeah. His clothes is yeah. flashy, but they're new and 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 real neat. He, yeah. That's his status. When you see him coming, you know here comes that pimp again. You can look at him yeah. and say, even a gangster, even a bomb has more respect. Than most people, because you know he speaks, and here he comes. <laughs> his status. Hear me clear. His status. Now you want to be respected. So the first question is, who are you? Right. Now the government says you're already in the coffin known as CISQ account. You're dead. Why would he want to worry about you? That's why he says, when you come into my court, bring an attorney, because I don't want to talk to dead people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and they, 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 they declare black people. Everybody thinks to be a minor. You think about a majority and, and minority. That's what those... Uh, A.K.A. did for us. With that, with that, mm -hmm. They taught them in college. You talk about majority, big, and minority, little. So then we get hung up in minority when they call us a minority. Well, they're not talking about the same definition. When they call you a minority, they call you a dead person. You are incompetent. You are a minor. You are a midget in, in age. You don't know nothing. So you've got to have someone to speak for you. Dang. And we go in there talking about why well, they call us minority when we got 80% of black people in Detroit. Because you're an idiot. That's why they keep calling you a minority. And your so-called bougie Negroes talk the same talk. If we don't get a, a clarification, when I talk to people on the phone, I make, or talk to people in person. I make them declare. One, one brother was telling me, he said, Ron, we could get ahead and we could just unite and get these people to get out. And I said, get out and do what? Oh, we're going to get out in March. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, nigga, please. What the hell are you? I'm not going nowhere with none of you. And you keep talking like that. I'm going to stop talking to you. I don't want to unite with you, mister. I don't know you. Why would I want to put my life in your hands? Why would I want to put my life in this gentleman's hands over there? He might have drugs and machine gun or, or knife and want to kill me. But he looked at me. I said, that's right. We were powerful in our, in our empire because we had, we had trust funds. We had trust. We had these Cisco account type trust. How do you do that? You have a chief and you have tri you have a tribe. And we're going to do a class on this in a couple of weeks. I don't want to go into it in detail. But you got a chief. The chief is responsible for his tribe. Let me do it this way. This is easy. When I came to Detroit back in the 60s, me and my partner had an apartment in the basement. We partied every weekend. But you could only get in if you were invited. Now, if I invite you, Ben, and you want to bring your brother and cousin and their wives and husbands, that's good. 
But if they start showing out, I'm coming to Beverly. Beverly, ain't that that crazy you brought in there? Yeah, get them out. Now, I'll support you, but you're going to put them out of my place. You're responsible for them because you brought them in here. That's right. You get it? See, yeah. if they do parties like that today, they wouldn't have all this gunfire and all this madness. But when they have a party or a cabaret, they open the door to the public, and somebody's going to have a gun. Somebody's going to have that amount of you hit on my wife and all that old gang gang. And so, so you're going to have a problem. They didn't have those problems back in the day. We didn't shoot and cut and fight when we went to parties and affairs. Right. You know what I mean? Some places did. Don't get me wrong. Everything was nice mm -hmm. uh, people. But as a, as a whole, we didn't do that. Especially we didn't want to kill somebody during that time. So what I'm saying to you is, if, in order for us to get out of this madness, we got to get back into the tribal cultural concept. They didn't have 50,000 tribes in the United States because we were, we were stupid. We had 50,000 tribes because that was how many families was in the United States, in our land. And each tribe had its own structure, rules, regulations. If you had a problem with the European or another tribe coming in, you would set up what is known as Articles of Confederation. Mm -hmm. You would unite on the articles. You don't unite on me, Ron Mark. I'm going to swear to uphold articles. You're going to swear to uphold articles. Let's go out there and kick some butt. <laughs> when it's over, we're going to divide the booty and we're going to take our butt back where we come from. You kind of get it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> mm. But see, when they brought Tarzan in and had them, them, them jungle bunnies running around looking stupid, and Tarzan swinging, see, that was another one that we did. We, it was brainwashing us. He's swinging in the trees better than the gorillas. <laughs> right, right. He had to come uh, to their home, and he, and he had to know their home better than they do. Yes. 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 And so the first thing that comes to your mind as you grow up is, I don't want to be in a tribe. And then the school says you come from a tribe. And now you're pregnant. Some of that wasn't me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so wow. it, was a, it was a form of brainwash that we was all, yeah. all grew up in. When I looked yeah. at those movies, I can truly say, I always wanted to be the native so I could stick one of them Europeans with my spear. Or I wanted to be an engine and always lost the battle because I wanted to kill a couple of them old peckles that ride on them arms. But I, that was just me. I didn't, I didn't mind being on the, the losing side. That's where I wanted to be anyway. But most people wanted to wear the white hat. You know how that is. And, and the two pistols, Long Ranger stuff, Roy Rogers stuff, white man. Wait at he know everything. Well, anyway, we ain't got to get off on that. <laughs> but you, you understand where I'm at, right? <laughs> well, now, you know, it makes so much sense, Ron, because I'm looking at, you know, with everything that is going on in Detroit with the takeover and the bankruptcy and yada, 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 and privatizing this and that, and the, the, the so-called activists, you know, they act like they're not even there. They just ignore them. I see why now, because they did. Yes. Yes. It when sense. I went to the meeting this past weekend, they had a, 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 they had a meeting of revolutionaries. Let's call it that. Activists. 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 There you go. And there was about 35 or 40 of them there. And I just tiptoed in. I stayed in the back. It was outside in the in the in the, in the yard. And they said, "That's my mark, my mark. You want to hear the speech?" I said, "Y'all don't want to hear what I got to say." And they said, "Oh yeah, we want to have a yeah 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 yeah." So I came up. Now I'm going to tell this to you, man, and you can explain it to the people. Two, uh, what was it? Ten days ago, the uh, shit. I mean, uh, Anyway, John Conyers, I'm trying to talk about John Conyers. The man that John Conyers had getting his signature just to get on the ballot, he's only been there 35, 40 years. But this year he gave it to a new guy. I don't know how that guy got involved. I know he's a so-called Negro president. 
I always called him Uncle Reba's nigga. But somehow, John Cotton has got him. He said, I'll go out and get your signatures. You need a 1,000 signatures. I'll get them for you. I'll get 500 for you, okay? He went out and got 490 signatures, turned them in. As soon as he turned it in, the, the challengers and the board said, all the signatures are no good because the four people he had passing out these uh, registration requests were not registered voters. Now you know what I'm talking about, right, Beth? Right, right. Okay. So now everybody gets up and get on. The news media, first thing they do, here's their strategy. Oh, he was such a good congressman. They nobody never like congress. I don't like congress. Everybody, oh, he's such a good con, but it's a shame that he can't get on the ballot. Now they got this other Jack Lay preacher in line to get the, to get the vote. Oh, Shuffling Sheffield. Now, here's what went down. By 11.30 on day zero, the city council, the, the county uh, uh, elected board of uh, clerk, the county uh, uh, like a canvasser of... Uh, they all said no. The Secretary of State said no. Everybody said he cannot be on the ballot. That was about 11.30, quarter to 12. By 1.30, John Conyers was on the ballot. The judge now, put him on the ballot. Didn't the judge say he could slow, be on the ballot? Slow your roll. Slow your roll. Okay. Slow your roll. So I asked them in the audience, I said, did that happen? They said, yeah. I said, did anybody ask Conyers what did he do? They said the same thing you just said. Well, the judge let him get on. No, 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 judge, he did nothing. They would kill that judge because nobody likes Conyers. Why people don't like Conyers because he got too much seniority. He runs all of those heavy committees up there in Washington because he got too much longevity. Okay? And the people in Detroit are, are dissatisfied. Most of them are disgruntled. Because, he, you know, he's just low-key, and he's old, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they keep him out of the way. Now, white people don't care who comes in, because whoever it is, he'll not have power like John Kanye. Mm -hmm. Well, I said to them, I said, why is it, if that's the truth, why is it that Detroit's been begging, crying, burning, candle like Vigil, going down to Cincinnati to the appellate court, did everything they could since 1992 when John, when uh, Coleman Young left, and you chose as not won one battle, and this guy won a battle, a humongous battle, in less than two hours, and you sit there and tell me some judge did it? Are you an idiot? <laughs> that lady looked for him. I said, I'm tired of talking, but I'm going to go off on you idiots. I'm not going to stand here and run this, and y'all try to strategize going to have another <sighs> march and another parade and <sighs> another... That's all. Get out of my life. Now, I said, I can tell you what he did. Everybody got quiet. Mm -hmm. He went to the Article Three court, what I've been ah. telling everybody to go to. Okay. And all he had to do, they know he knows his business, So, and they also know that with him being a plaintiff against Detroit, the, 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 the clerk, the city council, all the people that had something to do with kicking him off, they would have to come to the federal court and explain what law did they use, how did they do that. And this is an indigenous man. He's a black wow. man, a boy. And none of them can do it. And then the white man told all them niggas, don't say no more, shut up. And, and I'll tell you, and you'll have to confirm it, Devin, that nobody said a word after 2 o'clock on that day. No, they didn't. I heard that the judge uh, granted it, and that was it. I heard nothing else about it. Correct. Well, a judge had to grant it. But why it is it that Congress can get up? Congress is our congressman. We've been treated bad since Coleman Young left. Mm -hmm. And everybody's been praying, marching, burning candles, going to jail, saying we should overcome it. All that madness. Where well, was John Conyers? They come at him one time and he's solving in hours, two hours. They should grab him and yet I said, y'all should go find that punk, drag him out here in the middle of this field, take some whips, and say, if you don't tell us step by step what you did, we're going to beat the hell out of you right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, took that, I took that microphone 
and throw it on the ground. I'm talking to you. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, oh, oh, my God, Ron. You was too funny. <laughs> Oh, it was, it, was, it was something else. All right, let's get serious here. <laughs> no, that, that is that's serious, what you just said. That is so serious. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Boy, they looked at me like I was They said, Ron, we need you. I said, no, you don't. Because mm-hmm. you've been doing the same thing for the last 20 years. I've been telling yeah. you what to do. We, we need to yeah. go to an Article Three court and file. Everybody need to file a complaint. One behind another. In that big court. There will be some action, I swear. Yeah. But no, and see, they couldn't let him go to that court because it would open up a can of worms of all this mm-hmm. madness that's going on in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And I guess you heard that they're going to, for the next, I don't know, six weeks, every week they're going to turn 3,000 people in water off. That's what they're talking. They got a date, scheduled date to start it. Is that in Highland yes. Park or Highland Park in Detroit? Highland Park and Detroit. And Highland Park, they didn't collect their water for months. And now those people got $1,000 water bills. How are they going to pay yes. that? Yes. How do they get that? Yes. Yes. And they got their own water system, but it don't work. So they had to buy it from Detroit. Why is that? Why do no, the people yeah. now have to pay a surcharge to get the water when they had their own water in the hands of their elected officials? As my, Rob, as uh, uh, Malcolm X say, they've been bamboozled. They yes, they have. Yes, 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 yes. And when that lady told me or said back to me like she knew something, oh, yeah, well, he, he knows judges. I looked at her. I said, that's something you're just fiddle. You should kind of keep your mouth shut. He knows good. They don't like him no more than they like me. Mm-hmm. And you know they don't like him because he's in a, a power position. Yes. They've been trying to get him out of that position. That's right. They've been wanting him out of that position. Yes, he has. And when Congress, I mean, when uh, Obama won, that meant that he had to take over the, the leading Democrat, takes over all the committees. When Democrats president in office. So he's making plenty of money, he's getting plenty of stuff. Oh, I don't need to go through all that. And he needs votes. So I say you can you can blackmail him. Tell him we ain't gonna vote for you unless you tell us what you did. So anyway. One of the guys said, if, 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 if they, if, if they uh, listen to you and they take it to him and say, all you got to do is tell us yes or no. Did you do this, 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 and this? And all he got to do is say, yeah. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You but everybody wants to give you it. Here's one of our biggest problems, and I was guilty yeah. of it back in the 80s like everybody else. When I was told the information that I'm giving you today, First thing come out of my mouth, that white man ain't going to let you do that. Right. That's the first thing that came out of my yeah. mouth. The brother that was teaching me, he, he started laughing and said, Brother Mark, how do you know when you never you never took it to it? Mm-hmm. Well, well, he ain't going to let us do that. And people say that. And I say to them, how do you know when you haven't done it? Right. Then they'll lie and say something stupid like, oh, well, Fred on his side, he tried it. No, Fred ain't tried that. I can tell you that right now. If that's your best uh, resource, you need to do it yourself so you'll know if it's right or wrong. Don't come up with something Fred did on the east side because we drive over there right now. Fred ain't going to know what the hell he's talking about. I done been that rule. So we need to look at the situation, evaluate the situation, and then take a step to solve the situation. If you win, take another step. If you win, take another step. If you lose, step back one and figure out why did you lose. And then take another step. <clears throat> but they put that fear in us. And it's all psychological. <clears throat> and, it, and, you, and you're dealing with professionals. It costs yes. who got the money today to keep the black nation stupid. Believe you me. And there's not a coincidence why they tried this new process in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And there's no coincidence that all the courts are acting like they either can't hear us or don't know what we're talking about. And they're breaking every law in the books. Yeah. 
their law. And I said, all you got to do is expose it. Now, you can't expose it in their court because they're going to say it, 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 you, you, you lose. Go to federal court, and you can file as an alien because you're not a part. I told Beverly, I told y'all three weeks ago, or at least I run my mouth so much I think three weeks ago, I told you that anyone, any entity that receives $10,000 in a 12-month period from the federal government is the federal government. Do you remember me saying something like that? Yeah, I remember you saying that. You said, okay. now say that again. If we get $10,000, with anyone $10, from the whole 12 months, or you're talking about yes. $10,000 a month, or the whole year? No, no, the no, no. In the, in the entire 12 months, if you receive okay. a grant, a loan, or whatever else they do from the government mm-hmm. in a 12 month period, if it equals $10,000, you are a United States entity. You belong to that archbishop pump that, <laughs> that filed that paperwork that said that he, he owns United States of America, Inc. Now, if y'all don't believe that, I can pull it up. I'll go find it bring it back. What about people who get in Social Security and stuff like that? Yes, same thing. But you're getting Social Security in, in your straw man's name. Mm. Now, now somebody is asking me that on his birth certificate, it's not all cap. It's, you know, the first um, letter is cap and the rest is small. Ask him what's on his driver's license, his credit card, and anything that comes in the mail from all of his bills, his utility. Ask him what that is. And when okay, he tells he you all you. caps, he hears me? Yeah, he hears you. All right. I bet you everything else is in all caps. They might have had a smart aleck that day didn't know what they were doing. I don't know why it ain't that way. But I tell you this, when, when it got through, it, when it went from this, uh, Tower of Power in, in New York, when it went to Wall Street, I guarantee you it was all caps. I, mm. I'm going to see that. Right. Hmm. Yep. So now, now, what are they doing now that they want uh, more and more people to pay their bills, do things over the Internet? So you're not doing a lot of signing yes. anymore. They're trying, they're trying to get bill. Okay. I told you that there are 16 instruments that you can use. And they're trying to get you to use the Internet because it deals mainly with cash, check, or money order. Mm-hmm. So you won't even know what I'm talking about or say, oh, I can't do that because you, you, you're dumb anyway. And I'm not saying that dumb is trying to be I smart know. Know. But you're dumb because you don't know what you're doing in that issue. So you always, when you deal with the Internet, you always got to pay my credit card or check. And those instruments... Or they got a name for those instruments. Uh, and those instruments are the ones that damage the, the budget. Those instruments are the ones that run it up to trillions of dollars in debt, those type of instruments. But if you would use the other instruments, you could lower the debt in the United States. That's why they cannot refuse you once you learn the instruments and how to use the instrument. And the big one that I tell you about is except for value. Once you learn how to use that, they cannot refuse it. Because they're, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the laws that state that, number one, the instruments can be used, and number two, the entity that you send it to cannot refuse it. So just say that, just say I pay uh, all my utilities over on the internet, and so yep. instead of paying with a credit card every month, a person start doing the accept for value. Now you have to do it every month, or you do it one yes. time and that's it. Yes. Well, well, first of all, I don't know how you could do it on the internet with 
except for value. Because there's a procedure, no. process that you got to do to make it except for value. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, all the utility bills have a coupon at the buy, so you don't have to use except for value. Make the coupon a paste of, 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 of money order and mail it back to them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you dig it? Now, the question you ask, do you have to do it every month? Well, the answer is you shouldn't have to do it every month, but they're going to fight you tooth and nail because they've been living too good for years and years, been yet centuries, decades and decades, stealing your money but making you pay twice. So they're definitely going to try to act stupid because they don't know what you're talking about. Now, mm-hmm. if there's a way for you to pay, and I would suggest I'll just give it to you wrong. I won't tell you how to do it, but I'll give it to you wrong. Let's just say that your winter bill, your winter bill is, let's say, six months, and you're averaging $310 per month. Your summer bill is six months and is averaging $198 a month. Add the two together, divide it by two, multiply it by 12, and send that amount. Mm, okay. And then tell them to pull down on it. I'll have a balance every, that's just like you pay uh, some credit cards won't let you do it, but we used to pay more on your credit card, and it, it would show up. You got a balance over the limit. Mm-hmm. Now they stop that. In my credit card, I don't know. But what you want to do is pay them the same way. Whatever you're averaging a month, you make out one uh, except for value on that coupon and put that dollar amount in there and send it to them. And they're supposed to know when to pull down on your account because they got to give you credit when you when it goes in. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you it's going to be a fight. That's why I, I told you there's a, a, a plan B on my package. It's $25 because you're going to probably have to take them to court. <clears throat> Now, the court I mean? you go into, when you take them to court, do you go to to District 3 court? Or can you go into Article. The, Article 3. I mean, you go article. right to the top. You go to the top. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you, when you fill out your, uh, everybody ought to go to their uh, federal building and ask for a package. Tell them you want to file a complaint. And they'll ask you civil or, or criminal. Tell them civil. And they'll give you a packet. Mine was about almost an inch thick paperwork. And the one, three copies or four copies each. And on the top, it had what they call a civil cover sheet. Okay. I'll just exaggerate and say 10,000 boxes on the front that you have to go down, find out which one you want, and check it to let them know why you're going after these people. <clears throat> and it all makes a difference how you fill that out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So every, everyone that I send the package to, I let them know, <clears throat> read it is my instruction. Read the package before you use it. Call me. And I will question you or listen to you talk to see if you know what the Samuel you're doing. <laughs> and then we'll proceed from that level. And then we'll talk about the package plan B. Because if they don't respond in a period of time, you're going to have to take them to court. Okay. You ain't going to wait all day because you, your, your cycle is a 30-day cycle, so you don't want to give them no more than 15 days to acknowledge your paperwork. Okay. Well, Ron, we're going to take this call before we go on our break. So we have okay. a call here from area code 313532. Uh, good evening, uh, Beverly, and good evening, to Ron. Good evening. How you doing, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm over, I'm over here hooping and hollering because you're running it. So, you know, I almost, I almost saw you say it because I was going to come by there. But I didn't get a chance to come by to to hear the activists. 
yeah. talk about what what's going on, man. But I just wanted to call and say, you know, I'm 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 checking you out, and you know, as usual, you're running this great information. And I was wondering, it was it's a local little radio show that comes on, you know, in the afternoon. I was wondering, did you hear any of it today? Because it was the damnedest thing you ever wanted to see in there. Talk about the bankruptcy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. <laughs> I didn't I, hear it. You talked about uh, 1,200 <laughs> and, and oh. Eli and Landale or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I wanted to call you right then, brother. I was like, man, do you hear this Negro on here? <laughs> This, this agent they got on there telling y'all that y'all better listen to the master. He he got it going on. Y'all better listen to master. He he, he telling y'all right. But it was getting the deep part about it though was that people was getting in that was really laying down the the heavy information, Good. and Tokyo Rose ended up having to uh, take a call <laughs> off. Yeah, no, what happened was they got a call and she had to put the governor on there. The the governor went on live and was like, "Oh, he was on there. I didn't hear that man, part." Man, I'm telling you, it was unbelievable. It was oh, and, and, now now and, now listen, listen. Tell me this. You know of uh, uh, the the oh lord, I'm trying to think too fast. What's the lady's name that come out of the uh, city council down there? The the your finance lady that got kicked out. Oh, you talking about Prince, uh, Prince, the one that Prince. ran for mayor? Right, right, right. Did you hear her piece? Yeah, I heard her near the end because I was in and out, and I heard her, and she asked that clown, she was running them, you know, the facts and figures, and she said, what about this? And he started stumbling. He was like, uh, duh, 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 duh. he couldn't even answer. And then she hurried up and cut her off then. I know. And then she said, uh, cutting her off, well, is there anything you want to leave us with? She didn't right. even comment on what That's right. What That's right. That's right. She got a Ph.D. in finance. That's right. That's right. And she told his he behind up. Question, he didn't find out and he couldn't even answer. That's right. But he's supposed to be the financial expert that she have on yes. there every week. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, yeah, it's insane. It's insane. But, yeah, it got so hot earlier, and the show got so hot that somebody must have made a call to Massa, and uh, he got on that live. It just so happened that one of the people that really know what's going on was on there, and she was questioning him, and he didn't answer the question. Because she, she posed a question to him about, well, if all this you say is, is true, once we vote on this, they still can go back and change it because they don't have to finalize it to the latter part of July. And he yep. never would answer the question. Well, these people, yep. they wouldn't step forward to do this without, if they weren't reasonable. Let me tell you what I got out of it with Christmas that was very important. Uh-huh. Any deal that's made with this legislature, uh-huh. and, you know, they have a – the year ends January 31, or some old crap right. like that, right? Uh, when they vote in a new legislature, they don't have to accept no contract from the first legislature. So when the new legislature come in, they can do whatever they want to do. Yes, yes, yes. And he didn't challenge it. Uh, the, the Tokyo World didn't challenge it. <laughs> and she come back and said, they did, he said, if you burnt once, you an idiot. If you burn twice, you a fool or something. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna let y'all take y'all break, but I'm All listening, right. brother. All right. Them boozy, right. them boozy, something else, ain't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, All right Fred. Appreciate <laughs> you call, brother. All right. <laughs> yeah, okay, we need a break. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'll we be back. Truth to Power show, and I want to say happy birthday to Chaos. Uh, the music you was hearing came from Chaos and um, Holly Israel. So, again, happy birthday, Chaos. And you are listening to the Truth to Power show, and my name is Beverly B., and you're also listening to the Ron March show. And uh, I call him uh, Professor Ron March. And, Ron March, are you back yet? Yes, I am. What are you going to do? Okay. Okay. Uh, we ready to roll? Yes, we are. All right. Okay. Uh, subrogation of your rights. Subrogation of your rights. When London burned, 
the subrogation of men and women rights, uh, the Responsibility Act was passed. The Sissecure Account, Sissecure Account, Sissecure Trust Act of 1666 meant all men and women of the UK were declared dead and lost at sea. Dead and lost at sea. All men and women of the United Kingdom. And we talk about back in 1666. The state took everybody and everybody's property into a trust. The state takes control until a living man or woman comes back and claims their title by proving they are alive and claims for damages can be made. Now, that is the most important paragraph, the most important statement that I've made to date. That since they declare you to be dead, they will maintain and own and control your property until a living man or woman comes back from sea and claims their titles. Remember, status gives you a title. By proving they are alive and claims for damages can be made. Now, remember, all of this information today is what happens with a so-called, uh, what the Jews have, a bar mitzvah. What I'm talking to you about today, I'm giving it to you from the street. And, of course, they do it more sophisticated because they have all of the answers, rules, regulations, and structure of it. And each one of the families, let's go back to the tribe structure, each one of the Jewish families, the reason there's so much, quote, unquote, uh, uh, unity in the Jewish community, it's not what you see. It's not what it looks like. But the perception is there is peace in the Jewish community. But what they have is the chief of the tribe. He appoints, when he gets up in age, he appoints an apparent heir to take over the uh, tribe once he passes on. And the tribe has plenty of money because <clears throat> since they sold you at birth and placed you into the, the sister you account, not black people, not white people, all people in the United Kingdom, which means everybody on earth because when, when uh, McLeod, Derek McLeod gave uh, – the trust to England, which is the UK, and, he, and then he gave the, another trust to the Vatican, which means the Vatican, the Pope, runs everything on earth from the Siskiyou account. If you control the monies, you control the people. It's simple. So now you must think from a tribal structure. And I'm sure they stole this from us. They're not that intelligent. White folks are not that intelligent. But once they see something, they can mimic it over a period of time. If you think of lying, next time you go in the meet with white people, watch them all pull out a piece of pen, a pencil and a paper. You sitting in there don't know what they write, but they write everything down word by word so they can study it. Yeah. You already got it in your noggin because you knew it before you come to the meeting. I've been in plenty of them. I couldn't figure it out at first. Put out that pencil and paper. They just write. The hell are you writing? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you sound like you've been there, man. Oh, yeah. And they ain't writing nothing that you don't already know. Right. So the Jewish family has it set up that if anyone in the family gets out of order, they will be cut from the trust. They, they, I don't know this to be a fact, but I heard they each 
each in the, each adult in the in the tribe has an opportunity to go into business three times. If he fails all three times, he's put out of the out of the tribe. One of the tribe persons started hanging out on the corner with black folks. I'm sure he's kicked out without a without any struggle. He might be called in and warned, stay away from them people. You don't see none of that. So you ask, how do they do that? Now the first thing you're going to say, oh, they're the Jews. They, they got that Jewish religion. Ain't no religion that's done nothing like that. And religions don't exist anyway. It's fictitious like everything else. It's a structure. It's a fictitious entity. Government, fictitious entity. Someone has to be dictated to that entity and lure people in to his own, to, to that person's uh, way of life, put it that way. It's like when they talk about, uh, I can't go into the religion because I don't know it that well, but you got always got one person that starts one of these crazy, uh, one of these things. They always got one person. The Protestant, you know, he, he uh, Martin Luther broke away from the Catholic and started Protestant, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's only a concept. It's only a figment of one's imagination. All governments are fictitious. All entities is, is artificial, fictitious. But you got to have someone to, a grantor. That's who you want to worry about. I am the grantor of my tribe. And we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. You ain't ready for that yet. And I haven't got it down pat, so we don't even worry about that. But I know what I'm talking about. And once I get it set up and get it going, I know what I'm doing. How do you think and why do you think Reverend Jesse Jackson, Reverend Al Sharpton can travel all over the country, have no income, everybody calls him Rev, and nobody talks about, where's the church at, Punk? Oh, no, stop. Mm-hmm. That's right. Where's the church at, sir? Ain't no church. He speaks because everybody else is dumb. They think he's a preacher. Mm. But listen to me. I am a minister. What is my religion? Teaching every Wednesday, you people. That's my ministry. I ain't talking the Bible. I ain't banging on going to heaven in the Bible and buying all that madness. So I am a minister of my knowledge, quote, unquote, wisdom, and I teach. Everyone has a ministry. If you got a head on and you have a, the right state of mind, everyone has diplomats, someone that operates for the trust and has the right to travel in and out of all countries, all corporations. You deal with them. You're a diplomat. Y'all need to study this kind of stuff. You may not be ready for it now, but you got to get your children ready. Right. That's how they become powerful. That's why the Iroquois Confederation, if you look it up, it was a fictitious entity. The Iroquois Confederation was a fictitious entity, an artificial tribe. It had seven sub-tribes in the I mean, the uh, Iroquois Confederation. And the European couldn't figure it out. He, it took him, it took James Madison, I think it, you read and get into that, it took James Madison six or seven years to figure out how they kept peace. They didn't fight. They didn't have jail. They didn't have torture and all this crap that we go through today. Why? Because the chiefs of the tribe kept themselves in order, get their whole tribe in order. Love, peace, truth, truth, freedom, justice. If you wasn't a part of that, you got discipline. I'm telling you. <laughs> we got a lot to do. Ron, we, we have, do you want to take a caller right quick? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we have a caller from uh, area code 804-252. Yes, caller. 804, can you hear us? 
Yes, I can. I'm so excited to be on here. Thank you. Well, we're glad to have you. We're glad to have you. Don't get excited, brother. <laughs> and look, the whole process is getting me excited, but enough of all that. I just want to real, ask a real quick question. It's, it's pertaining to itself or value, at least I think it is. All right. Let's say you had a car repossessed. Could you use that process to get that car back? No. No. Mm. No. Now, let me That's tell you totally. why. Yeah, why? Once you, once you commit, and let me call it a crime, and that is once they take your car, it's in their jurisdiction. Now, if they send you a letter and say, you can get this car if you pay X number of dollars, yes, you can use, except for value. But okay. if they don't call back, and most of the time they don't, because they can make more money out of junk in that car than you probably owe on the car. Because mm, okay. then they're going to tell you every day was $35 while we had it in storage. So, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's too late. Yep, yep. So, now what you can do is file charges against everybody that was involved because they hijacked you, or better yet, hijacked your car. And the tow truck company is the first ones you go after because they were the criminal element. They're going to try and punk out and say the police told them to do it, and the police going to say that the third-party debt collector showed them some paperwork, and they they do that for them. All of that's illegal, brother. Unlawful, all of it. All third-party debt collectors is unlawful. All third-party debt collectors is unlawful. Okay. Okay. So if you go back to the beginning, let's just say you were paying for credit and you stopped paying for credit. Then you got a letter that said you owe for credit $10,000, and if you don't pay, we're going to take the car, something like that. So you either didn't pay or ignored it, and they, somebody came and took the car. Am I right? Yeah. All that's illegal, brother. Number one, nobody can take the car from you because you were the creditor. Number two, you paid for the car when you signed the paperwork to get it. There is no money. Number three, but, the, the, go ahead. What, but what about if it's a lease car? Oh, now you always throw a monkey <laughs> bitch in it. Because at the 
in the 30 days. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. That is a contract. Although it's an illegal contract, the courts recognize it as being a contract. And at the end of 30 days, you did not respond. That law firm go downtown, show the judge that they did this and did that. Most of the time, they ain't got to show the judge nothing because the judge going to make money out of this. Judge will sign it. They'll pay $45 to get the judgment, sign it. And then when they send it to, to, to you, it says in the first or second line, under your name, in the lower part, in the in the lower part of the of the summit, you got 14 days to uh, uh, answer us in writing. That's when you should write and tell them. They all pull it, all y'all crazy. I don't know law firm a dime. I don't even know who these people are. Now they know you know something. Now everybody will start trying to act almost legal. But they're going to still try you at every turn to see if you really know what you're talking about or did you get that off the Internet or talk to somebody named Ron Mark that didn't give you all the information. And once you make a mistake, they're going to jump down on you. Okay. You dig it? You okay, Colin? Yes, do. All right. Can I ask one you. more quick question? Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, you mentioned a lot. Of, um, you give us a lot of information. Is there any way? or anywhere that you have, like, a list of the websites that we can go back and visit? <laughs> All you do is Google in what he tells you. Google in this, um, this study. You account. Okay. Yeah, that's yep. that's what I'm doing now. I was just yep. wondering. Okay, okay. Yep. And Thank if you, you email phone. me and ask me some questions, I'll pop some stuff at you, throw it back. You know, that ain't no big deal. Okay, then. I will do that. Time I come on, I'll always get a pencil and paper so you can write down these things and keep listening. And then when it's over, start Googling it. And then these things will start coming to you. Yes, I do that, too. Sometimes I have to go back, but we're on the same page. I sure appreciate what you all are doing. All right, buddy. Thank you for appreciate listening. you for listening. Thank all you. Right? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, That's better. You got, you got another call? Now, go ahead. All right. That paragraph I told you is a very powerful paragraph because that's how they get you. They trap you right in because you're already in that coffin. Your mama put you in there. And I just started calling it a coffin today. I just It just died on me. That's all that is, dead people in there. And it says clearly, the state takes control until a living man or a woman comes back and claims their title by proving that they are alive. How do you do that? You do that by declaring your status. Anytime you go before the courts, the first thing you must do, seven days before your court date, you should have paperwork in the mail. And it's called a special appearance. You can Google that. Special appearance or special court appearance. You want them to know you're coming in as a live person. That makes them so mad. And when you come in there, you want to make sure you do that by saying, I am Ron March, upper lowercase, R-A-R-O-N-A-L-D-M-A-R-C-H, Ron March. That's my status. Ron March L. Bay, we're working on a lot of stuff. Your name itself, they have incorporated your name into that uh, a dead dead box. That's why you want to uh, come up with a spiritual name. And you don't want to put your spiritual name into the coffin. How do you do that? By opening up an account, going into the government of where you are. When I say government, doing business as Joe Blow or Harry or Kuta Kinte. When you get your first letter back from the dealership, it's going to be in all caps. You don't want to put your name into the public domain. Always leave your spiritual name in the private domain. When you're answering letters, you can use your private name. My name is El Kim Mayakayate. I've been using that for uh, 12, 10 years anyway. I don't talk about it in the streets. 
But when I get one of them old graded letters, I sign it L. Bay. I mean, uh, 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 L. Kim, Mayat, Kayat Bay. Now I'm getting more information on this tribal thing I'm talking about. And I'm going to get more of that before I try to present it. I want to make sure I got all my T's and I's, I's, and T's crossed, that type of thing. All right? Now, let's continue. Since you are already dead, you're in the coffin. Anytime they come after you, they come after you under those state, state of condition. You're a dead man. When you start arguing and raising the hell, they love it because yeah. you have lost. Anytime you create a controversy, you automatically lose. They don't have to say a word. That's why anytime you stop while while driving and or while traveling, listen to what they say. Let, give them your status. They gonna say, "I don't want to hear that crap," and shut your mouth. When it's all over, go back and get it for violating your rights, and definitely listen carefully for violating your 13th Amendment. Why 13th? Because the second part of the 13th Amendment talks about involuntary servitude. What is involuntary servitude? Creating debt that you cannot pay. I bet you never thought of that, uh, Ben. No, no. Anytime you get a ticket, I'd be cut this down. Anytime you get a ticket, give me a second here. Okay. Come on, come on. Anytime you get a ticket, that's a debt that you can't pay. You don't want to pay that ticket. So they're creating involuntary servitude, making you be a, a, a penal. They're creating a, pe- a, pe- a penal system. Read that part. You'll see it. Look up those words in that second section that talks about involuntary servitude. Okay. okay. All right. Now, I'm still trying to get this thing to quiet down. Hold up. Let me cut it out. There we go. All right. Now, this is why you always need representation when involved in legal matters because you're dead. I just said that. The legal fiction is a construct on paper. That's all it is. When you go to court, there's nothing there. You got an idiot in a black robe and, and two Casper and a friendly goat are 12 Casper up in the, in the bullpen up there. And all they're doing is, uh, uh, let's call it, uh, construct on paper. So you need to make sure they understand that you are alive. And the first thing the judge is going to do is act like he don't know what you're talking about. And any time you start dictating your rules and regulations, all you have to say is, uh, sir, I object. Why? It sounds like you're practicing law from the bench. That's not your job. Now, it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. Your knees going to be rattling. That's why they set a court up like that. Hmm. You never see windows in a courtroom. They try to show you that in movies. They got windows on the side. You ain't never seen no windows in a courtroom. Because you don't know which way you're facing. I can tell you now, you're facing the West when you go in the courtroom because you're facing the devil. Your God is in the East. Wow. That's something else. You don't need to know that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it's you, I tell you. Numerology is all about yeah. science. It's all about Masonic order, different secret yeah. societies, everything is yeah. based on that. The European yeah. needs that in order to function with you. You're born with the knowledge of secret society, especially yeah. the women. They all know yeah. all of it. But in order for the European to do it, he needs to be taught, and he has to be taught it by degree. That's why they don't want to be taught the 33rd degree of Masonic order because they'll find out who their daddy is, who brought them into the earth. 
Now, go, re- go research that yourself. Honestly, are you laughing, man? Huh? It sounded like you were laughing. No, I, I'm just, I mean, I'm just listening. <laughs> I can't say nothing. It's just... <laughs> This is the 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 deeper you go into the hole, the deeper it gets. No, no, and I'm trying to stay out, but I, you know. Anyway, okay, a legal fiction is a construct on paper and a a, a state in trust. When we talked about the coffin. When you get a bill of or summons from court, it is always in capital letters, similar mm-hmm. to the tombstone. In the graveyard. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's right, because we dead. We dead. So right. that, that makes sense. That's right. Now, any, let me say this to all of you out there. Anytime you have a, a death in your family, and I don't, the word I want to say, I, I, uh, I hope you don't. Everybody do. Always remind them, your loved ones, to get extra or get copies of the death certificate. Yeah. Run off copies. And when you get a presentment in the mail that that uh, a person owes, always send a death certificate. Let right. them know the straw man is dead. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. The straw man is dead. So. That way you don't have to pay it. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, my dad, he always had good credit. I want to pay his bills off. You are an idiot. (laughs) And then when they come to the wife and say, well, y'all was one, so you you have to pay his credit. Yes. His debt, I mean. Yes, yes. The first thing you want to do if that that happens is ask them to validate the debt. I will willingly pay if you show me where there's a contract that I signed as a wife and you signed as a creditor. And I guarantee you they can't do it. Because your husband didn't have a guarantee, he didn't have a contract. We don't went through that a couple, two, three weeks ago, man. Right. So don't let them scare you with that yang yang. You just would smile and say, oh, yeah, I want to pay. Send me a validation. We'll go from there. And if you don't always think through, I, I started this in my class. You got to learn how to counter sue them. When they send you a presentment, they're trying to sue you for X number of dollars. You have a right by the United States Constitution to negotiate any contract that you receive. So negotiate means you're going to accept their contract for value and you're going to counter it by them telling them, you, if you can't prove this, it, to my satisfaction, you owe me $500,000. Counterclaim. It's called C-A-F-V. Conditional accept for value. Y'all need to look this up. I love that C-A-F-V. Conditional except for value. That means okay. that, that if you can prove this and prove that, I will gladly pay you three times what you ask it. And, oh, yeah, by the way, consider this document, this notice that I'm sending you, and self-executing contract that if you do not answer in 15 days for what I'm asking, I will go through criminal or civil, civil action against you in the amount of, but not limited to, $500,000. Okay. Now, now, when you do this, do you go to their court or do you yes. go to the Article Three court? No, you go to their court. There's, a, there's okay. an unwritten law, and we, uh, well, it's almost a known fact. You have to exhaust your remedies before you go to a higher court. Okay. So you give them you have to give them an opportunity to uh cure cure the, the your problem. Okay. That's why they give you thirty days to answer. They're giving you thirty days to cure this this madness. You gotta give them thirty days. If you go after somebody. 
And if you don't do it in 30 days, they can easily call it extortion. So you don't want to get hung up in that. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All righty. Okay. When you get a bill or summons from court, it's always in capital letters. Send it to the tombstone. Capital letters signify death. They are writing to the dead legal fiction. A legal fiction was created with someone informed when someone informed the government that there was a new vessel in town based upon your birth. Guess who that someone was? Your mama. Hmm. <laughs> Don't get mad at mama because she didn't know. They tricked mama. So that's mama why. That's, that's why they got informant on there on the birth yes. certificate. Yes. Yes, man, yes, 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 yes. Informant, when it comes back. Now, remember, the birth certificate is a reward, Benny, uh, uh, Beverly. When you was in school and you sang good or you played the instrument good or you mm-hmm. did something good in reading, writing, and arithmetic, you got a certificate. Mm-hmm. So when your mama mm-hmm. turned in that slave known as little baby, baby John Doe, she got a certificate. Job well done, mm-hmm. sister. And they got the money. (laughs) (laughs) And to make it legal, they called you an informant. Informant. And you didn't, most of them don't even know. Oh, this thing is. Now, 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 uh, Ron, can, okay, can we, uh, since they, since our birth certificate is worth millions of dollars, can we, uh, cash? Can we get that money now? See now, you you just you just you just blew it. First certificates are not worth millions of dollars. Well, since they made millions off of it, they didn't make millions off of it. Well, okay. First certificate is worth millions of debt credits. Oh, of credits, right? Credits. Okay. Okay. When you start talking money, that's when you get in trouble. Okay. Now you're going back to cash check or money order. Your birth certificate is worth, at 18, they say it, it was worth up with the economy today. I have no idea. But when I was studying and coming in, so they, they told me at 18, mine was worth about $85 million. Now okay. at my age of 73, Ain't no telling how much it's worth. But I'm tapping into it. I'm trying to get out of it when I can. I filed my paperwork to separate it from the government. You don't know if you did because they can't answer and can't call because the government is a fictitious entity. Mm -hmm. All you can do is send it certified mail. And once you get the green card back, you have to assume that they did what they're supposed to do. Now, since it's worth all of that credit, so, yeah. I mean, how can we, they have benefit from that credit. Oh, so yeah. how can we benefit from it? Everybody benefits from your credit. When you, get, when you fail to pay a note, sell the account in a pool to, to the third-party debt collectors, they send a notice to the IRS that you were in default. From that, the IRS will send them a digit, and that digit is used in their accounting to balance the books. That's why you Mm -hmm. seldom see these white companies go out of business, because as long as they create sales, they can never go out of business. Because if you don't pay, they don't care. They're going to get a digit. Their wealth of the business may lose its value as it does on Wall Street. You know, it goes up and down. You just can't keep putting people in debt. And then everybody files a default on everybody. But those that you do file default on, you let the government know, and the government gives you a digit. Now, something else you asked me about that, and I think, what was it? How 
how do we benefit from it? They've been okay. benefiting from all of the millions of yeah. uh, from yeah. there. How can we benefit from it? Okay. First, you have to get your mind into commerce that there is no money, only credit. So that mm-hmm. means that you have to work to get your credit uh, 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 rating up where you can buy. So you go out and buy you a Cadillac. And your credit says you can afford it. Now, you but, maybe. You know what? But, what? But what about people who have A1 credit? Okay, that, well, that, that's what I'm talking about. You go out and, and purchase something. And when you purchase it, you you wait, uh, I'll say, a period of time. I'll just say that. I ain't going to go into specifics. Mm-hmm. And then you write it off. But you paid for mm-hmm. it when you bought it. So if you want to get an air conditioning unit or a, a, a central air in your house, you go through it, get it in, you know, get everything, everybody's happy. First, your first uh, bill comes in the mail. You ask them to validate the debt. How are they going to validate it with nobody signed but you? So everything you purchase, you purchase with your credit that you have yes. from your birth certificate. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Now, I don't like the way you said that because some people okay. pay cash. You didn't leave that door. You left that door open. Not everything okay. you get, you know. But if you, whatever you buy on credit, you have a right to use any instrument to pay it because HJR 192 in the New Deal says that the government will pay all public debt. So you bought it in the public name of, of Beverly D. All caps. You received it in the name All caps. You took, sent it to the government to pay it. How do you do that? You use instruments. Number one instrument that I I, I, I use and, and talk about is except for value. And looking now, at the, looking at the clock, I want to move quickly to the area of. And, and also, Ryan, we got a question. This person want to know how does one repair their credit if it's not A1? Well, tell them to email me because I'm getting ready to set up a friend. I'm trying to make it on every end. Okay. I'm going to set okay. up a, uh, uh, a company that will uh, clean up your debt. But tell them they can go online. Don't pay but go online and ask the same question. Google it. And they'll give you information. Information the highway is out there. All you got to do is Google it. I keep telling everybody I'm not hiding it. When I tell you, I get information. But I know how to ask certain questions to get some good answers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need to learn how to do that. Let me jump over here on the back real quick. I'll be getting close to the top okay. of the hour. Okay. So where are you? So when you have commerce and money, so where you have commerce and money, you also have justice. You need to understand the bankruptcy before you can understand the uh, judiciary, meaning United States, ever since they were formed back in 1789, they've been in bankruptcy. (laughs) And they filed it in separate, in, in different times, they have filed bankruptcy, especially after seven years, when bankruptcy is supposed to be clear, or 10 years, they file again. We're in bankruptcy right now. Every president, since everyone listening to me has been alive, we've been in bankruptcy. That not only gives the president a leeway to do everything he wants to do, it also gives the corporation the right to make up the rules and stay in that madness called United States Inc. <laughs> We need to accept the bankruptcy. We have accepted the claim to accept the summons. So when they send you a summons, you accept the summons. Stamp it, accept for value. There is an obligation to accept any liability which has been created. I'm reading fast, but this is what it says. And if anybody wants this information, email me, and I'll send you copies of what I'm, what I'm reading from. You can read it yourself. All right, all we can do is is accept the bankruptcy. We are operating in admiralty. Admiralty means 
that you, uh, they're running this government as if it's a huge ship. Mm. Is the kingpin. He does what he wants to do. Look at some of them pirate movies. The captain do everything. Tell him when they hang somebody, throw him overboard, take him on an island, maroon him. All that comes from the captain. Nobody challenges his decision when he's on the sea. You got it? You got it. All right. Uh, uh, a not plea, I mean, a not, a not guilty plea, dishonored. If you say, Judge, I'm not guilty. Judge, I don't owe them that money. Judge, they, they, they entrapped me by doing this and doing this. You're dishonoring the bankruptcy. You are in hot water when you do that, on paper or verbally. It doesn't matter. Anytime you refuse or create controversy, you automatically dishonor the system. Now, I dishonor it right off the bat, but I don't care nothing about it. But if I get trapped in the system, I got to act like I got some sense because my straw man is trapped in that madness. You, you get it? So I'm not yeah. going to go in there screaming, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, get out of here. I got to find out why they got him in there. So I'm going to let them know when I come in with this special appearance, I want to be respected as Ryan Mark's all cap, and I'm only here to find out what happened to my all cap. Real peaceful. Now, we may, we may want to start here next, next week, this, but I'm not going to have time to finish it. Okay. But I want to get to okay. We are operating in admiralty. A not guilty plea dishonors the bankruptcy. The strong man, a.k.a. legal fiction, is always guilty. Tell me why he's always guilty, tell me. For one thing, he... I don't know. You almost no, said he's dead. I was thinking about that we were dead. But, yeah, uh, exactly. uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's always guilty because he's dead. Who cares? Whatever you do to him, get him in the corner. Mm-hmm. Yes. It needs to be accepted for value. That's what I want to get to. That's where I was going with all of this. In order to defeat the 1666 Kiss Kiss account, all the things I've discussed tonight, you're in it, you can't get out of it, because the straw man is there. <laughs> they created it. Your mama signed you up for it. Some of y'all, they took your little, little tootsie and put it in red ink and stamped, slapped it on that paper, which is mm-hmm. a signature that you agree as a baby. <laughs> so the red, the, the red numbers. Well, the red, the red number is your bond number. We'll talk about that later. Can't get okay. into that today. Okay. okay. That red number is very important. Everybody should get them a. Social Security card with numbers on the back, not the number on the front. Right, the oh, red Jesus. number. Yes, all of them not red, no better. I saw all green not. and I saw black. Okay, okay. Okay. Barristers and solicitors make a living out of cheating and creating controversy. In other words, those 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 third-party debt collectors and those bill collectors and those uh, callers always create controversy by getting smart with you. Yeah. So you lose right off the bat. Mm. By creating a controversy, you become liable for the case honor and dishonor. Then uh, to remain in honor, you have to accept a claim and settle it. You must settle it. Then you add conditions. We can stop right there, Ben. Eight o'clock. Okay. Okay. We'll pick up next week. Uh, but we got one call. You want to take it right quick? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Area code eight five eight six zero six eight zero. Greetings. Hey. Um. The 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 thing at the back of the Social Security card. That's a dunce number. I'm not sure if that's what they call it. It's a what? A dunce a number. Well, the red. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Okay. I you don't can't know. agree with you because I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I, 
I know the numbers there, but I never call it a dust number, so I don't know. Well, that, that's what it's called from one um, dude, I think his name Ali Muhammad said it, and in, in one of his research, that's what it's called in the back of the social security number. This is from my memory. So, you know, All right. Well, you need good. to ask, always ask, what does that mean? Is it the dust number? Uh, I, mean, I, probably, called, I could probably Google bond, it. A bond number. And that bond number is powerful because it will tell you by those numbers and that letter in front where your bank account is. And best keep asking, where is that money? It's in that, it's in that red number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, one one question in particular, because um, you said people, even with the straw man, is a dead entity. So, you know, the funny thing, if they're considered, most people that take on Social Security and follow the straw man are dead entities, the way they'll ask the system to say, why why use their labor if they're considered dead? I mean, they're no longer living. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's yeah. kind of weird question. It's a weird question, though. It's not weird, but maybe you're not asking it right. Here's what I got from what you asked. Why do they say the straw man's dead? Because it is dead. And out of your ignorance as to who you are, you think it's alive because you go to work every day. And they still, through the straw man, which they call it uh, transmitting utility, through him, they make you pay his debts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see what I'm saying? When you yeah. sign your name, it's a natural person that signs. In other words, here's what, you, here's what y'all do. I got them here, babe. We're going to go up there. Everybody get a personal check that they have at the house, wife, daughter, it don't matter. There's five lines on a check. There's a, at the bottom, there's a memo line, and then there's a signature line. And then there's a written line for the dollar amount, and then there's a, another line. Who's going to get it? So that's one, two, three, four, and then there's a date line on there somewhere. You got it, there? Yeah, I got it. All right. Take a magnifying glass and study those lines and tell me why one of those lines is not like the other four. And what do you Mm. see that makes that line Mm. not like the other four? Interesting. That that, that line had numbers in it, don't it? No, it's got a word in it. It's got words in it. At the end of that line, it says M slash P. What does that mean? Microprint. You got it? And that says in them lines, it's a, it's a word. And I'm going to put it in my own words. I'm a slave. Take all my money, please. That's what it says. Is that what it means? Yes. And you have to sign it with a signature. So going back to this young man's question, you sign your name as a signature that gives that strong man on the left, all capital letters at the top a right for the people to steal your money out of your account. So you signed it as a natural person, and you gave the power to that all cap, and they snatch it because they own all cap and take your money right out of the bank and do whatever they want to do with it. You don't know what's happening. Wow. You got Very it. interesting. All right. Well, uh, until you, next Carl. time, I'll, I'll, I'll okay. bring in some people calls. Thank you, Ron March. Hey, uh, call back next week when you get a magnifying glass. Let's go do this again. <laughs> Uh, Ron, can you take one more call? It is one more call. This we is all, it, y'all. This is it. This is it. Seven seven three three nine six. This is it. Seven seven three three nine six. This is it, Ron. I love you. I'm done. All right. Okay. Was that it? Was that it, Carla? That's it. She just wanted to tell you she loves you, Ron. All right, I love you too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you Nick? Uh-huh. Yeah, somebody accused me. On the, I called them on the phone. They said that I didn't like women. I said, where did you get that from? Because you always uh, don't do this. And I said, I don't know, but I want to make it clear. I love women. So let's go with it. And I'm a mad man. <laughs> right. right. You got a beautiful right, wife. So. What, what is they talking about? I, I, okay, Ron. So uh, we can't wait till next Wednesday to get here, and uh, so we can get some more information. But in the meantime, we need to research and study. We have to know this. Yes.